Welcome to our January webinar, a collaborative presentation of the Federation for Children with Special Needs and the Recruitment Training and Support Center. My name is Mary Beth Landy, and I am the Training and Support Specialist for RTSC. Today's webinar topic is Prioritizing Health and Wellness, Self-Care Strategies for Adult Caregivers and Staff Who Support the, risk, the High-Risk Children, presented by Sharos Walker. Ms. Walker has been a special education teacher. She has trauma counseling background working with children's ages 4 to 22, and she currently works as a trauma and student support consultant, as well as a life coach and motivational speaker. Today, she will speak to the development and effective use of support systems while creating consistent self-care practices. During the webinar, please type your questions into the toolbox and we will try to answer them during the presentation. Also, past webinars are archived on the, the RTSC website, along with many resources on trauma and learning and educational in issues that impact students in the child welfare system. Welcome. Thank you, Mary. Um, it's my pleasure to speak to you all today and to talk um, about something that I know that we all um, speak of, but are not good about uh, practicing. Um, so I hope today that you're able to first um, determine uh, what areas of your life you need to balance out and to focus on when it comes to your self-care practice, and then also um, to determine which uh, uh, what support systems you have um, and maybe you realize you do have them, but you're not using them effectively, but how you can um, uh, bring in the support of people in your life to help you and hold you accountable for making sure that you make yourself a priority. Um, I'll start with a little bit of a background, uh, a little more background about myself and why this is a topic that is really near and dear to my heart. Um, as Mary Beth has mentioned, I am a former special education teacher. I taught special ed for three years. Um, and then I also, actually four years, and then um, I was a coordinator. I have had so many different roles when it came to education in the Boston Public Schools and many leadership positions. Um, I worked in the Boston Public Schools for 12 years. Um, it wasn't really until um, last year, I worked as a trauma specialist for the district where I realized how important, um, so I, over the years I've developed a self-care regimen, but really working with um, teachers and administrators who were experiencing um, a, a high amount um, of, of, of stress, toxic stress um, on a daily basis and really being burnt out and not knowing how to manage that. Um, and I did take an opportunity last year to provide professional development for a few schools um, to support teachers around the area of self-care where um, not only were their families able to hold them accountable, but their colleagues as well um, within the school schools that they were working in. Um, so I hope um, that as I, uh, the work that you do, whether it is you a provider, you're a provider, if you are um, someone who works with students with special needs, um, I really hope that this webinar um, helps you to just map out a plan um, so that you can put yourself first. So I'll start here and um, let me go to the next slide. Thank you. So here are some um, signs that we often feel um, with our body, within our bodies, just pay attention to our bodies, but we don't um, take action until it's too late. Um, so this is a sign that you really need to focus on you. Um, if you've experienced insomnia, increased illness, loss of appetite, anxiety, depression, uh, feelings of pessimism, chronic fatigue, loss of enjoyment of things that you, you and things that you activities that you enjoyed doing before that you no longer um, enjoy at the moment um, feelings of isolation detachment um, increased irritability um, and feelings of apathy and hopelessness um, those of many of those are signs of depression 
Um, but there are also signs that you are um, over, um, you're overworked, that you're over, that your body is just on overdrive. And it's a time, it's a sign that you need to focus on yourself. Um, one of the first steps that you can work to do to work towards um, the self-care, especially when it comes to the emotional balance, if you are feeling or experiencing signs of anxiety or even depression, pessimism, feelings of apathy and hopelessness, um, loss of enjoyment. And these are things that, you know, there, there may be a day or a week where you feel like that. But if this is something that's ongoing, that is about three to four um, weeks out, then I would advise you to uh, fight, to talk to your PCP so that you can be connected to um, a therapist. Um, I think that that's something that we know we need, um, and but we don't want to carve out the time to do. And then also I know in, in many situations, especially culturally, it's such a taboo to um, say that I need help and I need to talk to someone. In some situations, I may need a little um, it's more on top of the therapy, medical support to help me get back to where I want to be because of how I'm feeling in the moment. Um, so I would say that it is advisable for you to do that. Um, and the, the biggest quote, I mean, the biggest reminder for me is a quote that always comes up and I tell this to my clients, I tell this to my friends, I even say it sometimes to myself because I'm also a giver and I have given a lot and to a point where I have been stressed out and sick and, um, really uh, burnt out. Um, but it's always, what good are you to other people if you're not good to yourself? So you wanna be at your maximum. You wanna be at your best so that you can give as much as you can. Because if you're burnt out, then you're only giving bits and pieces, not the full you. And when you, with the people in your life who you love so much, the people, the students you may work with, or the children that you're providing care for, you wanna be at your best. And that's, Part of being at your best is making sure that you're okay, that you're grounded, that you're centered, and that you're happy. Okay. So balancing self. How I like to break it down is just four different areas of who you are and different areas of your life that are important. For others, you may want to uh, extend this to um, other things, um, but the big primary areas that we should focus on are spiritual, emotional, financial and physical. So where are you in your spiritual life? Are you happy where you are spiritually? Whether you're religious or you practice, you have a spiritual practice, um, what um, co connection to source, to God, um, or to even to your religion, do you feel like um, you need to have balance in your, in, in your life? If it's not balanced, if it's out of balance, what can you do to make that better? Especially if that's a priority for you. Um, emotionally, again, just um, with day to day and just different demands um, that we all experience, like how are you supporting yourself emotionally and how are you balancing yourself emotionally and what supports do you have in your life to balance you emotionally? Um, those are things that you want to think about as well. And then financially, I mean, I think we all, that's typically at the forefront of our minds, especially if we have families. Um, we're thinking about financially, how do we support our family? How, how do we provide and how do we keep things afloat? Um, and so balancing that out um, is important as well. And then physically, um, what are you doing for your physical health? Um, what are you doing to make sure that um, you are eating well, that you're exercising regularly? Um, how are you balancing that out and how does it add to these three other areas of your life that completely is a full balance for you? And then next, it's your support systems and accountability partners. So who in your family do you have that you can talk to, that you can lean on for support? Are there people in your family that you know that you can reach out to, but because you might be the, uh, the one who everyone depends on, you feel like you can't go to someone even though they're there? Um, same with your friends and the same with your colleagues. Who are the people in your life who are supportive and who are the people that you know that you, you can reach out to who can also support you as well. Um, those are, it's important to figure out who, who those people are um, in order to help hold you accountable as far as taking care of yourself and putting yourself first. And you definitely wanna be surrounded by and include people in your life who are going to support you putting you first 
versus those who will make you feel guilty about putting yourself first. Um, because we often have these relationships where some people see the impact of when we don't balance our lives. And then there are others who do see the impact, um, but who are benefiting from you giving so much. And so they still want to take. Um, so just really differentiating between the two relationships and really like narrowing down who those key people are for you and how you can best utilize them to support you um, in your self-care practice and journey. Okay. So now I'm gonna just pose a question and I'd like for you all to, um, not, you don't have to be so specific, but I'd really like for you, and if you do have a pad of paper, um, at your side, a pen and a pad of paper to really write down, list list two or three people um, in your family in or, or who are colleagues or who are friends, I guess actually one for each, family, colleagues, friends, just start with one. One person that you can go to in your, to your family for uh, support and encouragement. Another person that you can go to um, as a colleague as well. So when you're in your work environment, it's so important for you to be surrounded by colleagues who are supportive. Um, and even as I came here to the Federation today, just seeing the support um, between colleagues here, even just around uh, supporting and encouraging them to practice self-care and to stay on top of it. Uh, and also friends. When your network of friends, do you have um, who you know that you can lean on and who will really hold you accountable around the area of um, your self-care practice. So I'll give you a few minutes for that. And if you have any questions or if you'd like to share um, who those people are or whether or not you have used uh, these people as supports um, or any questions about how you can go, um, how you can reach out to people for support, uh, even though you might feel uncomfortable asking for, it seems like help, when really it is we're all connected and we all are um, here to support each other, but just moving beyond that, feeling like I'm the one who has to keep it all together. No one can really know that I'm under stress, uh, I'm, I'm experiencing stress or I, I need some help and I need some support. Um, so any feedback or um, just comments that you have around those areas. What I'd like to actually ask you is a question that I think many people are asking themselves is how can you suggest some ways that someone who is not good at asking for help, mm -hmm. um, and I will raise my hand as one of the, being one of those people, yes. um, to reach out to somebody who you haven't actually even shared that you're struggling, mm -hmm. you know, how to start those conversations with people. Mm -hmm. um, if you could speak a little bit to maybe some suggestions or ideas of, of how to reach out to somebody and ask for some support. That's a, a, a great question, Mary Beth. Um, that is, that's what probably one of the most difficult things to do when you are deciding that um, you know that you need to work, focus on self and that um, it's important that you develop a self-care practice and uh, to really engage other people in that um, experience. So typically, I mean, you, 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 what, what I see come up mostly is when people don't want to ask for help is because they are the ones who are responsible for doing everything and they're expected to do everything because they've just done it so well. Um, and what you what happens behind that is that you feel like you cannot be vulnerable, right? That you have to be this very 
imperfect in other people's eyes um, version of yourself. And so it does take um, some humility um, to just say, you know, I, I am not perfect and um, I do need help in this way. Um, and typically you, you, I've, I know that people have experienced these situations with their families, mm -hmm. um, whether it is your partner, your husband, um, or whether it is even your children. Um, I know that even sometimes for parents, it's hard to say to your children, um, I am right now, I'm going to go to a yoga class and I'm deciding to not maybe go to your practice because this is a commitment that I've made for myself. And when your children are just so used to you being there all the time and putting them first, um, it's something, it's a hard pill for them to swallow. So having a conversation, even as a family, just about where you are and how you feel, um, whether it is your immediate family or whether it is your, your siblings or your parents, um, sitting them down and having a conversation just about um, what's going on with you and how you just need support, how you don't mind doing all of these things, but in order for you to continue um, being that person, uh, that you will need support when it comes to taking time out for yourself. Um, that's a really hard conversation to have. I know especially for moms um, as, and being a mom myself too, I've had to go through this experience, especially with having teenagers. Um, I have a 20 year old and I have a 16 year old. And um, as some would say in the past, I was the typical helicopter parent. But when I started to prioritize my health, and this has been in every area of my life, even with family, I really had to sit down and say, you know, mommy is over, I'm, I'm, I'm stressed out. And I, I really need your help in this way. Um, I'm gonna need you to maybe pitch in a little more. I'm gonna need you to understand that if I can't be here, um, that I'm, I'm still part, but I just have to do something for myself. Um, just being intentional about making sure that, and I always say even with clients that you are fulfilling your joy, that we all deserve joy, we deserve happiness. Um, yes, there are stressful times, and but we don't have to live in toxic stress all the time and we don't have to be overloaded all the time. But it really does take those conversations with the people who think that you are Superman or Superwoman to be like, I'm not. And being okay with that too. Mm -hmm. um, and just asking for help in the process is really important. Mm -hmm. We have a question or, or a comment actually about um, individuals who don't have family or friends that they can go to. And um, colleagues can be a challenge at work. I um, agree. Specifically around disclosure and you know confidentiality. Mm -hmm. um, do you have other suggestions for areas that people can? Yes. Um, so, I mean, a great thing about the city of Boston, and I'm not sure people are streaming in from other locations, is that if you look around, there are all kinds of resources and all kinds of groups um, that are uh, available for whatever reason. Um, I have made friends just even through my, my children being involved in sports. Um, you, if you are very involved in school, like I'm on parent council, you can make friends by being involved in your children's school environment. Um, but there are often, there are many groups um, where they're just informational groups or just gatherings and you just never know who you will meet uh, when you attend those functions. And so I would say, especially I remember talking to a woman who had no family here um, and just had her, her husband and her, her son. And um, she came to a group because of uh, for work related reasons. And right away had divulged all of these emotions because she finally felt some uh, camaraderie with the women who were in the room. Um, and I mean, of course, she didn't reveal too much, but she really revealed of more than she had ever just because she attended this group, but it was work related. So just being open and, and looking out for those opportunities to meet people through different groups or opportunities or even events, um, that, that's life changing um, because uh, that's, that's what it's more about. Sometimes we don't feel safe enough even just to share with our family. Um, 
but if we can find that other a, a friend or a colleague, and I get it about colleagues too, it's, it's really not easy and you don't have to be friends with coworkers. If you don't have that connection, it really is about the strong connection that you feel. Um, then there are other ways. So there's often community events. If you even look at like the Boston Community Centers, um, they have events even for adults. They'll have yoga classes or wellness classes. And I actually have a friend who um, just is offering a self-care um, series at the Blackstone Community Center um, that started Monday. So there's lots of opportunities out there. You just have to just seek and do a little bit of research. Okay, great. Someone, um, Anne actually suggested um, Massachusetts Families Organizing for Change. Okay. Um, family Leadership Graduates is a great network for family leaders to reach out and connect to as well. So yes, um, I, I think that there probably is a wealth of knowledge. Yes. Um, people just have a tendency to forget sometimes yes. to mm -hmm. reach out. Yes. Um, and then a bigger part, so even how I've met so many people and been uh, more involved in community events is the Vital Village Network, um, who I, whom I am in uh, a local improvement advisor and uh, community champion, champion for. And uh, we actually had a community a meeting last night and um, in a smaller group I connected with a woman who uh, just happened to, so was, you know, located at Boston Medical Center. Um, she just happened to um, attend the meeting because she saw flyers and she and her daughter, um, you know, would go to Boston Medical Center all the time. And so this was her second meeting. And she said, I just wanted to see what it was about, but also to connect with other people. So, um, if you are interested, you're more than welcome to come to the Vital Village Network meetings. Um, it's definitely community driven by people who are in the community and we have all kinds of programs and projects um, that are uh, resourced by and, and led by people who are from the communities of Roxbury, Dorchester, and Matt Mattapan. It's also a way to connect with people and to get involved too. So if there's something, if there's always something for any for everyone to do. Um, depending what your passion is. So whether it's, if you're a new parent, it's breastfeeding support or new mom support. Um, if you are a dad or, or, or a male who needs some support, there's like the Male Engagement Network. Um, we actually have Social Justice Institute. So there are just so many opportunities um, that are free to you through the Vital Village Network as well. Great. Yes. It and I also think, that, as you had mentioned before, um, on spirituality, that uh, church communities yes. are also a great network yep. to get involved in. Yeah. So if you are a member of a church, um, that's another way to get involved. I mean, whether it and then just also to get spiritual counseling through your pastor or mm -hmm. pastor. Uh, yeah, your pastors or ministers. But lots of churches have functions um, and gatherings and. Um, that's another way to connect with people. Um, and it, it, I know that even if you have these opportunities for some people, it's difficult to step outside of their comfort zone. Um, but that's an opportunity for you as well as through the churches and um, other um, places of worship. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. So, um, this next exercise is um, commitment to self. So at this point, you've had, a, you had time to reflect on um, who your support systems are currently um, and what parts of your life you um, need to focus on as well to help balance out who you are in um, your practice of self-care. So at this time, I'd really like for you now to commit to one or two things um, in each of these areas of your life. So if spiritually you have been saying, you know, I Sundays, I don't want to go to church um, because I'm tired from the week, but I, you know, I, well, I want to go, but I'm just tired from the week and I just really don't have the strength to go. Maybe committing to going to a church service or two um, within the next couple of weeks uh, would be helpful for you because making that step and that progress, once you're there, you might be able to continue with that um, pattern. Emotionally, I've been feeling depressed. I've lost interest in so many things. Uh, I've been feeling out of whack. I'm, I've been so irritable. 
I'm just tired all the time. Um, really making that appointment with your PCP and, um, and, and moving further, of course, to find a therapist. So that could be a commitment that you make to yourself. Um, financially, all the bills are stacked up. Uh, I don't even want to look at them. Um, so just making the commitment to sit down, whether it's you or with your spouse, to really just face and confront whatever the financial situation is so that you know you can kind of move forward. But committing to not just doing it, what, what, what is really helpful is a date um, to have it done by um, or, or, or on and um, what your outcome is. So how do, if, you're, if, you're, if you're committing to financially working through bills, what's your outcome? Is it to, we're gonna do this so that we can start saving and we wanna save this much and we're saving for this, uh, this college or whether it's uh, just to save or, or if it's a trip, but that's why you wanna get your finances together. Um, same with physical. And, and this is where I see a lot of people and I have been guilty of this myself and it hasn't been until this past year where I've committed to physic, like my physical health. Um, and it can be anything as, as little as um, YouTube has lots of videos. You don't even have to leave the house. Um, I have a friend who started on Beachbody and at this point, she's still every single day. She did Beachbody about two or three years ago. Every single day, she wakes up before work, 4:30, and does 30 minutes every single morning. That's her commitment. Um, an example for myself is I've committed to two uh, yoga classes a week, and <laughs> also bought a membership because that's an incentive too. You don't want to waste the money, so that's helped me to be consistent. And I try to get in a dance class every now and then. Um, but just really making that commitment to yourself um, because physical health can affect your emotional health. Um, and if you are physically active, you're less likely to feel depressed and to feel that pressure because you're, 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 endorph you're, you're increasing endorphins, right? So you're, that feel good um, chemical through, uh, uh, that you might even get if you're depressed and you're prescribed an antidepressant, you can get that same feeling from working out. Um, and being physically active. So for me, naturally, that would be the best, best way to go to help you get out of any funk that you may be experiencing or feeling. Um, and it would be in that physical area. Um, and then just talking just about health, because connecting that to physical, um, eating well. I mean, I know sometimes uh, you can be so busy that you forget to eat right? Um, and then for some people who are trying to lose weight, if you don't eat, then your body goes, gets into a response where it stores more fat because it's like you haven't eaten. And so then here you are, you know, going days because you're so busy, don't eat. And then you're like, I want to lose weight. And then you're not because you're not eating well and your body is like over responding to that. So really like maybe making a commitment to planning meals. Um, if you know that you eat out a lot, um, maybe try to plan meals that Sunday before or even the night before just to make sure that you're eating healthy and you have a balanced diet um, because that also affects you emotionally and like what you can handle and manage too. If you're eating lots of heavy foods, then that affects you physically and it actually zaps your energy even more. So you can imagine being so busy um, and then here you are eating heavy foods when you do eat. Um, it's just a, a, a not a, a really good combination. So I suggest that as well. Um, so I'm gonna give you a few minutes and if a couple of people can share a commitment that they uh, will make or are planning to make, that would be great so we can discuss that. Okay.
while people are writing that down, um, we have just a couple of comments or questions. And one of them, I think is a great question, is what if your stressors are caused by the people in your life that you have to deal with daily? Oh, that's a good um, one. What suggestions do you have in that oh, case? Oh, that's a good one. Um, and that is the reality of it all. Um, that's when you have to explain to the people in your life daily that you need to take time out for yourself. Um, and they may not be happy with that. Um, that's what happens, especially when we have our children and we have spouses or partners. Um, but you also need to be okay with that too. And eventually when they see how committed you are to that, then they'll be on board. Or if not, it's just whatever. But for the most part, they'll see, especially if you are the one who is managing everything. Um, but that is, that is, most people, I mean, especially with our families, our families can be our biggest stressors and triggers. Um, but it is important for you to separate from that, to focus on what brings you joy, what makes you happy. Um, because no matter what, uh, if you're not in a good place and you have to deal with these stressors, it's just not going to end up well. Right. Um, so just also being confident and saying, like, I'm taking time out for myself. Um, and I know that you may not agree with it and you may not like it and it may take away from some of the things that I've always done for you, but you're also capable of doing these things. Um, and I also need to make sure that I'm okay too, because I can't do you know, all of these things and not take care of myself. I'm going to be depleted mm -hmm. and continuing to share that with the people that you are surrounded by on a daily basis. Like if I don't take this time out for myself, I might be in a hospital or, you know, I might, you know, because the stress can eventually lead to health issues and health problems. And that's a reality of it. We have heart disease and there's all other kinds of um, medical issues that are related to um, being under and experiencing high or toxic stress. Mm -hmm. So um, I always feel like that medical, <laughs> that medical uh, advice or example is good enough, especially for family, because then they think about, oh, we don't want any her to be sick or, you know, to be unable to be here and to be around us and to, you know, so um, that's always an eye opening thing for people because they don't think about that when you are, and it's not an intentional thing, mm -hmm. um, but when you are doing all of the work that you are doing, it's like, okay. And then when you're consistent with it and then they see how your mood has improved and how you're much nicer to be around and you're not, you know, uh, irritable and you're not tired all the time, then they'll be on, typically they'll be on board with it because mm -hmm. they'll see a positive change. And I also think it's important. Um, you mentioned having teenagers as, yes. as do I, um, is that it is, um, important to be able to role model for them. Mm -hmm. um, I think the life of an adolescent is very stressful Yes, and role model for them that it's important that they also learn to develop their own self-care practices, mm -hmm. uh, particularly then, with high school these days. Yes. And, and then also to be able to advocate for themselves mm -hmm. too, to say that, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I value myself enough to make sure that my well-being is at, is primary and is at the forefront. You're showing them that that's what they need to do as well. And um, and also, um, if you are, you know, physically fit and you are involved in these activities, and they'll see, well, this seems to be working. So maybe I'll try that as well. Or spiritually, this is what you know you're doing, and your children are watching, and they see that that helps you to stay balanced too. Even emotionally, if your children know that, you know, mom needs to see a therapist because mom has been through so much and mom needs to process things. Um, talking about that will make them feel more apt and able to, if, some, if the time comes, if they need to talk to a therapist, they can. Um, I do feel like boys are different, <laughs> but um, I, yeah, the two boys, but um both of my children, I have one who definitely is in tune with all of this. And like, if he's very, very open about how he feels about everything. And um, I, I, I think that part of that is watching me just go through this and then just seeing, he, seeing me help other people 
get to that point too. Um, I think for a while, I know that I was the superwoman character in my children's mind and even my family's mind. Um, and it really took some humbling experiences where I had to say, I, I need help. And um, this is where I'm at. Um, and from that moment, it's like no one looks at me or maybe that's the pressure that we sometimes put on ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just much easier to ask for help, to say I need space, to say that I am not responding to this today or to say I'm going to go to a yoga class and then we'll come back and we're going to talk about this. Uh, or I'm going to go for a hike because it's another one of my self-care strategies too. And uh, I'm going to come back and I'll, I'll be in a better space. I'll be more grounded. Um, and just showing them that that's how you can balance things out, um, that you can you know, develop this, this plan for yourself and to also make sure that for me, it's always about groundedness and being centered. And when I'm off, then I do, I do an, an action immediately to get me back to being centered. So it's something that you practice over time. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. Mm -hmm. A couple of people have commented on your questions. Mm -hmm. um, one suggesting that they get uh, planning on getting more sleep, yes, which is so necessary. And mm -hmm. I think we have a tendency to underplay and think, oh, I, get, I can get a couple hours mm -hmm. and that'll tide me over. Um, and then it just snowballs. Yeah. It makes it harder and harder. Then you get into the insomnia and you can't sleep. Yeah. Um, also, someone um, talked about getting every day proper nutrition. Mm. And I think that's something that we path the kids lunch. We try and make sure they're eating healthy, yep. um, that our family is having a balanced meal. Mm -hmm. But it's also easy for us to be running out of the house yep. without necessarily having packed our own lunches. Exactly. Um, or for me, my famous thing is I leave my lunch in the refrigerator and run <laughs> out. Um, so um, they've actually talked about, you know, adding specific foods into their diet is what they're working on. Oh, that's awesome. Um, and those are all great ideas and suggestions to commit to. And then I would add to find someone to hold you accountable, mm -hmm. right? Because we can commit to these things, but if no one really knows about it, then it's really easy for us to kind of get out of that commitment. But if it's in the home with the food, if you have your your one responsible child, one child who's just like on top of everything that you do, you can say, you know, can you please make sure that mommy packs a lunch too? Can you please make sure that mommy doesn't leave her lunch in the refrigerator every day? Same with your husband, your spouse. Um, and then a similarly in, in, in a work environment, if you have a colleague um, that you may have lunch with or who you share your commitment with, they can also follow up with you to say, well, you missed your lunch. You didn't bring your lunch again today. Um, you got to make sure you bring it tomorrow. Do you want me to give you a call? You can even figure that out in the morning to make sure or a text to remind you to, to bring your lunch. Um, yeah, I mean, there's so many different situations. I um, had a former colleague who made a commitment to um, walk um, with uh, walk with a, another colleague every day and they held each other accountable. So, you know, that one colleague also just made sure that they went and and so that was that was a situation where mm -hmm. it worked out. Um, I I know in the in the past, especially with my this the last year working um, as a trauma specialist, um, I really um, I feel energy from people. So I could tell when the teachers were burnt out, and sometimes they would come and they would just um, just let it all go. Um, and I would remind them. I said, "What do you? What did you? Have you been uh, kind of sticking to your self care plan?" Um, what are you doing to, to make sure that you're okay? Uh, what are you going to do this weekend? Okay, you don't have time now, but can you carve out some time this weekend to get some sleep, right? Mm -hmm. um, to go to a, 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 one example was a, she made a commitment to go to a bar class um, every week. Have you been to bar lately? Mm -hmm. uh, you, so just following up with that. And even when they would look at me sometimes, they'd be like, oh, I'm not sticking to my my commitment, but just knowing that you have that person who is there. Um, and then, yeah, it's, it's really important, really important. And I also see the different um, categories feeding into another. So forgetting to bring the lunch means buying lunch, yeah. which impacts the financial mm -hmm. aspect of it, mm -hmm. which increases the stress mm -hmm. of 
and and becomes emotional of you know beating oneself up yeah. because they didn't do that and that um i think your, your statement about having the accountability is huge yes um uh definitely know that at times in my life um my car was my vehicle for where i ate mm -hmm. actually so also my, what was not healthy was always in the back seat of my car right um you know or having having a bag of, of uh, pretzels or something instead of having an apple right mm -hmm. um and so realizing that um that one does lead to the other mm -hmm. and they are all dependent in many ways on mm -hmm. a, a good accountability system yes um and trying to find that person that's at least willing, um, if not to be your support person, to be your buddy in mm -hmm. a way. Um, and also noticing, um, you mentioned about taking a you know a hike or a walk. Mm -hmm. This doesn't necessarily have to be something where you're investing a lot of money. No. Um, people who don't necessarily have the money to join a gym mm -hmm. can certainly go out and you know take a walk around the block a couple of times. Mm -hmm. um, I a lot of times yes having a buddy where you can walk around the school grounds if mm -hmm. you're a teacher during lunchtime mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um we we have uh, employees here at the federation that will buddy up in the, the nice weather there's a park around here mm -hmm. um, and take a walk um the federation offers yoga for its employees mm -hmm. um, once a week which wow. is a great uh benefit that mm -hmm if nothing else helps with the centering of the mindfulness mm -hmm. um, for people. So it doesn't necessarily have to be um, an expensive venture, either that you're joining, you know, the most expensive health club and um, or things like that. But right. There are simple things that can be done. Yeah. And I mean, um, I'm, I, I myself am a, am a nature person, so I don't really care too much for gyms. Uh, or health clubs, um, which is why yoga is the best thing for me. Most of my um, uh, self-care practices have to do with the outdoors. Um, I'm a little adventurous, so even in the summer, I paddleboard. I just go to the beach and just want to like, I just put my feet in the sand or just to be in the water. Um, you can be really practical with it. And like I said, even as far as um, the physical um, fitness. YouTube has everything. Um, I even recently bought myself a spin bike. So instead of paying for a spin class, I just go on YouTube and I do one of the cycling programs. And it's about, I found one that's 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. So um, you can definitely be efficient with that, especially if you're not, you don't want to spend extra money. And if you're not someone who really does gym, uh, does the gym. And of course, it's easier to kind of be outside when it's warmer. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can also do things in your home, too, because I've even done yoga in the house as well. So um, using YouTube mm -hmm. <laughs> is a great. And as somebody brings that up, mm -hmm. um, Adam talks about um, a uh, he does a training that addresses self-care. Mm -hmm. And he finds that some people do not have the concept of what a self-care plan is. Yeah. Um, and wondering if there's any suggestions to help them better identify self-care and an activity um, important to them. Yes. Um, so on the final slide, there are four um, resources. Um, there's four different articles that explain or show different types of ways that you can develop a self-care plan. Examples of self-care, and there's one in particular that helps you to kind of focus on the areas of your life that you, um, you that you need to zone in on and how you can develop a self-care plan in that way. Um, I usually use, a, it's a, a chart that I have, and it's just really this, these four areas, mm -hmm. uh, the spiritual, emotional, financial, and physical. And then you just write down those areas, like making that commitment. And it's usually three per area. And that's something that I would say, hang it up. Um, I'm good. I'm big with visuals. So in your room and just remind yourself that these are the areas that you're committing to every day. Um, but the four resources at the end that the, the, that's on the last slide give you like a plethora of like ideas of how you can incorporate self-care in your life and just, just different ways that you can do that. But thank you, Adam. That's a, a really good point because um, people hear the word self-care, but they don't know what it actually takes to um, put that into practice. And we also have uh, another question as far as being a teacher, how to find yes. the time mm -hmm. um, to do that in the moment of a stressful day. Yes. Um, <clears throat> so I 
technology is great. Um, I, I would suggest a mindfulness app. Uh, my favorite app that's out now is Aura, but there's also Calm, which is also very popular too. Um, you can either, when you have a break, just do a five minute meditation on either of the apps. What is helpful and what I have done um, and I've seen teachers do to make sure that they get in some meditation is they actually do it with their classes. Um, I've seen kindergarten teachers do it right after lunch. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen uh, middle school student, middle school teachers do it first thing in the morning just to get kids settled. Um, when I've had uh, social skills groups or trauma groups um, with especially the my middle schoolers because um, I felt like they were really under a, a high amount of stress, especially my girls. Um, we would, it was a, it was a, it, it took, you know, practice um, because they thought it was really funny to be quiet and to be still, but eventually they began to look forward to it. And we would do that at the end of our group because some of the things that we would talk about were really, you know, emotional and deep and just so that we could leave and they could move on and, and continue the day, we would do that. Mm -hmm. but I would also get in some mindfulness too. Um, and if you do have time, um, find a time during the day. Um, so maybe even before students come into school, just to just turn the lights off in the classroom, play, you know, put on a five minute meditation and that's your meditation for the day. Um, but that's one one example of how you could get that in as a as a teacher. And I, of course, know um, I, because I've definitely been there. Um, and yeah. Great, thank you. You're welcome. And so here are the resources. Um, ways to take better care of yourself, how clinicians practice self-care, activities to add to your self-care plan, and then 50 self-care ideas to try. So I did want to share the third one because that's more about the self-care plan. So this is, there's so many, there's 134 activities. I wanted to make sure that I gave you guys as many ideas as possible. Um, and this is uh, by good goodtherapy.com. Um, so it's, here's the uh, way to, to work on your own self-care plan. Um, pick one thing that you need to do, get it done. So it's off of your list. Um, get a manicure, pedicure, so these are examples. Um, try to get acupuncture. Um, so really just what self-care is, is just determining um, <laughs> what you, oops, what you, what, what works for you, because, you know, we all have different um, needs and things and interests. Um, and so, you know, a hike might not work for someone, but it works for me for figuring out what helps you. I mean, I am like the self care queen at this point. I mean, I've gone from none to trying so many different things. I mean, even recently I tried shiatsu, um, massage. Mm -hmm just because I was like, let's see if this is another thing I can add to it. Um, but just really committing to um, a self-care practice. And then this, the, 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 the 15 self-care ideas is probably the most accurate. And I think this is mind body. So I love mind body. They have lots of uh, articles just about health um, and about wellness. And um, I read their articles every day, but this one is just really explicit as far as um, some examples that you could to, to help you, like even in little, like just just to be, I'm, I'm a big gratitude person. So being present, because sometimes a lot of our stress comes from thinking about the future and what needs to be done and not really being in the present moment. Um, so just little things that we often don't think would matter um, oops, can help us with the self-care. So, um, and one of the things that I can do for our audience is um, I can email those links thank to you. people. Okay. Um, so people can expect that after the, the webinar. Thank you. Um, so something as, as small as, as little as, um, 
Oh, I like that forgive yourself. Yes. So these are just like ones you wouldn't even think about, um, but they really help you because it's, so celebrate little victories. If there's a day where you remember to bring your lunch. I did today. Celebrate <laughs> that. All right, Mary Beth. <laughs> celebrate that, like own that because that's something that you've been trying to work towards and you were able to do it. Um, the second one, I think that we often beat ourselves up for whatever reasons, um, is to let go of the guilt, the shame, whatever, and just forgive yourself. To forgive yourself and move forward. Mm -hmm. To forgive yourself and be present. Um, look, are you holding on to anger, resentfulness? And so when you think about emotionally when you are stressed out, there's all kinds of negative feelings attached to that. Um, and some of it is the pressure you um, put on yourself. So just if you're not able to meet everyone's needs and you're beating yourself up about it, be okay with that and just forgive yourself. Just let it go. Um, something that I've done recently, especially being a consultant now, and I've been like basking in a little more freedom is bringing creativity to cooking. And so I have, uh, I enjoy cooking more than I ever have because I don't feel rushed. Um, but just, you know, finding the time to, if you like to try different spices, if you want to look at different, uh, YouTube is everything. So there's lots of uh, YouTube videos where if you want to make any kind of um, dish, you can go there and then follow that. And then if that brings you joy and, you know, of course your family gets to benefit from that too, these mm -hmm. new recipes, that's another example. Um, learn something new. So an example is, um, Recently, like I said, it's like, oh, I want to learn about chi energy and, you know, because I'm just a spiritual person. So I said, let me, I, I want to figure, I want to, if you think about acupuncture or shiatsu. I've never done it before. And so I did my research and I found this amazing woman and I've been to her three times now. And um, I, I'm grateful that I kind of stepped outside of that because traditionally that's not how I was raised. It's not culturally like anything that I was exposed to, but because I wanted to try something different and it's also massage, um, I said, let me try it. And I was really impressed with it. So definitely stepping outside of your comfort zone. And just, I think that there are things that we want to try that we're just like, no, I can't really do that. And once you do it, you're like, wow, I really like this. I'm happy that I stepped outside of my comfort zone to pursue this. Um, and what one other thing, so this is a gratitude list for me, but making a list of the things that you love. You can make a list of things you love um, daily. I um, have a gratitude journal. And so instead of being caught up in life, right, I try to bring it back to um, what's important um, and what is good. Um, and so here you can make a list of all the things that you love. It's good for your psyche to focus on the positive too. So I like to jot things down about like what I'm grateful for, not what didn't work today, what was the struggle, um, because we're always going to think about that. But no, what am I grateful for? Mm -hmm. So, and then do something you've always wanted to do. Um, if you've wanted to travel by yourself. Um, I know lots of people who are doing that now, even who are married. Um, I think that you should, you know, commit to that and, and challenge yourself to go on that trip. If you say, I just want to get away from my kids, my husband, I just want my own little vaca vacation, go ahead and do it. Um, if you feel like, I know that some people physically feel like they can't take or do certain things, uh, classes, um, you want to challenge yourself because this looks interesting, it looks fun. Um, go ahead and challenge yourself when it comes to that as well. Um, and even, I think, as far as health and, and food, um, feeling like, I mean, I have people in my life who um, they, they don't like, like vegetables and, you know, and so I'm always uh, trying to talk to them about, well, it's really healthy for you and, you know, you should try this. And they're just like, I don't really, but just really moving beyond your comfort zone um, and challenging yourself to, to try new things. Um, and another, I'll just do two more, dance to an upbeat playlist. 
Mm -hmm. Always, always. Uh, music, I say, it just heals the soul. Um, so I love to listen to music when um, cooking or cleaning, but then there's some kind of dance routine that's always mm -hmm. being introduced or implemented into that, but it lifts your spirits. Um, and it's a good way to release whatever you've been holding on to, mm -hmm. too. It allows you to be free. So whether you're in the car driving, if you find your favorite song, if like, I know if I'm in a, a certain mood, I put on a certain song and I, I sing it until my, like, I feel like I'm back to where I need to be. Um, dancing does that for me too. Um, but, you know, music in any situation, I feel like everyone would feel like that. There's certain songs that um, will move you to a, a better place. Um, so, yeah. I have a playlist on my I, uh, iPhone that says bounce mm. and it's, it, it is music. It's fun putting the playlist together yeah. to go through and select the songs that, um, some of the hits from the seventies will do that. Nice. Um, yeah. and, uh, you know, it's the music that you can also play in your kitchen when no one's watching and dance with the animals and, yes. um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, or in the car and yes. not worry about whether you're critiquing yourself on your singing mm -hmm. or your dancing. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just let loose and enjoy. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And I know in general, like, I like to feel close to God. So there's one particular song that, like, no matter what, I just put it on and I sing it. And I feel like, ah, oh, I feel, like, close to God. Um, so, you know, whatever happens, what whatever, whatever works for you. Um, just prioritize it and actually make that playlist. Take the time out to make that playlist um, because that's important. Sometimes we're so busy and overwhelmed that we don't even have time for that either. So we have three more minutes. Um, just any final questions or comments? Let me just see. So Mary Beth is going to email the four links of resources um, for you to access to help you with your self-care plan. I can actually email her as well. Um, the chart that I use um, that actually says self-care plan on it, and it's just a, a big circular grid, and then it's, put, it's uh, divided into four quadrants. And then you can list at least three ways or three areas that you're going to, things you're going to commit to in each of those areas of your life as far as um, developing uh, a good self-care practice. Um, and what I would add is really to um, find the people in your life who you know is, are supportive and who can hold you accountable um, towards uh just committing to anything that you're uh, trying to do um, as far as your self-care practice. And I think I would add one other aspect of it is be gentle on yourself. This is sometimes takes a while to get a new practice yes. um, into a habit. And that if you, you know, one day it slips, um, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Just tomorrow's a new day yep. and a new opportunity mm -hmm. um, to try something and, and, um, having a good toolbox, I think, where you have different options. Yes. And someday you have a little bit more time, so you could do something that takes a little bit more time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to have something, um, you know, a little bit quicker. So you may not have time to take that hot bath. Right. Um, but there may be time to, rather than um, parking closest to the park, to the store entrance, mm -hmm. park farther away and take a little bit more time walking in or around the store, mm -hmm. um, get a little bit of exercise as well, mm -hmm. that there's just having a good opportunity to be able to fit self-care into your life as opposed to feeling like you have to change your whole life to make sure that it happens. Exactly. And I think you've, you've explained that and exemplified that very well for everyone. Yes. And it's not, I think it seems as like it, it more difficult than it actually is. Um, because there's just so many ways, like just how Mary Beth just mentioned, taking a bath. And even if you can't take a bath, take a hot shower. Mm -hmm. But just take some time, even within that shower, to just be present and to meditate. 
there's so many ways that you can incorporate self-care into your daily lives. You just have to be intentional about doing it. And it maybe there isn't something at this point that you feel like you can commit to, but maybe just you should you can commit to just doing one self-care practice a day or a week, you know, and that's where you're gonna start. Um so thank you so much for your time. It's it's been a pleasure. Thank and you. um I hope that you all have uh are, you're, you're leaving here with um some ideas on how of how you can prioritize yourself and um, work on a, a better self-care practice. Thank you very much for taking the time out of your busy day. Thank you. So come in and help us with our self-care. Thank you, Mary Beth. Thank, Thank you. you.